Hi, I'm Amanda. Welcome to Real Flicks and Popcorn Picks. Uh, actually, I don't know where my co-host is. Where is Dan? The movie's about to start. I can't stop. What? Wait, you forgot your popcorn! Today, we will be reviewing the movie Lift. It is a heist movie in the comedy action style of Ocean's Eleven. We have a master thief and his crew that must pull off a near impossible heist to steal $500 million in gold. Sounds easy enough, right? Well, did I mention the gold is on a plane? And that they have to pull this off in midair. Open Call Martial Arts. Unleash your inner warrior at Open Call. Get ready to sweat, smile, and feel unstoppable. Let's kick stress to the curb and join the fun today on their website at opencallmartialarts.com. So the, the cast is amazing. First of all, Kevin Hart, Sam Worthington, Gene Reno, Billy Magnuson, love his character's name in this one. It's actually Magnus. And we also have Vincent D'Onofrio, which you know is uh, currently Kingpin, you know, from movies like Men in Black, Full Metal Jacket. I feel like Vincent D'Onofrio, what an actor, right? You just listed the movies that he's known for. He also was on Law and Order. Right. Like the guy's a legend. And I feel like he was so underutilized. I mean, yes, the master of disguise. So he was the master of disguise, which is exciting. And they could have definitely built more on that. There was that one scene with him and Kevin Hart too, where they were kind of talking about how Kevin, how Kevin Hart's in love with Abby. Right. Yeah, he looks at her. Yeah, the, the, the look cute that, little. yeah, it was cute, but they could have built, like, I was like kind of sucked in by that scene. I'm like, they could have did so much more with the character. I could see him having his own spinoff as that character. Like, I think that could have worked even better than trying to watch Kevin Hart do like a, a non-funny role. I would put this in the category of kind of mindless entertainment. So I thought, <laughs> I really thought that it was, there were points where it was really hard to understand. And I thought it was just me, but I did do a little deep dive and found out that there were other critics that felt the same way. There were points in this movie where I wish that my husband was sitting next to me because he's the guy that always explains the scenes that I don't understand, mm -hmm. right? I feel like they had such a great opportunity to really build these characters out with the film, but they were so focused on the action. On, and Kevin's group. Yeah, yeah, like Kevin's group specifically, I felt like they were fun, they really got along, and then, there was that scene where Kevin was gonna let his whole group go because it was just too too dangerous. And then everybody turns around and they're like, no, we're gonna be here for you, Kevin. You know, we're gonna support you. And I felt like I wanted more. Like that was a chance for them to really start to build out the characters. See, now I, th I thought that was like a sweet moment. It, it really showed the bonds between Kevin and his crew because even like his ex that's there now, the one from Interpol is like, wow, they really love you. You know, because they wouldn't back down. They were all like, no, we're, we're sticking with you. This isn't an option. Like, we're with you. It's, you know, that's, that's his ride or die. That's his crew. Yeah, and I get that. So, like, that was a chance for them to start to maybe build out the characters and not focus so much just on, you know, the action, which was, which is great. But, again, some of it was just so extremely unbelievable. Like, after a fight like that, you really think that people are going to be able to, they're going to survive. Yeah. I'm gonna fight like that. Yeah, I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna go walk. I'm gonna go get the, make sure that you don't get the gold. I think too, they could have expanded more on the character, I believe his name is Jorgen. We didn't really know a lot about his backstory. So I feel like the stakes weren't high enough for us to be like really invested and, and you know, oh, make sure that he get, they get the gold because this guy's so bad, he's so terrible. Wouldn't he have three scenes total? Right, because in the beginning you have Kevin basically automatically denying like, I am not doing this job. It's him, are you nuts? Like, I am not touching this one with a 10 foot pole. Right. But then it's like, they really didn't dive deep enough into that evilness of, you know, what has this guy really done? Like, should we all really fear for this guy? Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. They just didn't touch on it enough. Mm -mm. I feel like, and they, I feel like they also spent a lot of time with like all this amazing scenery, right? Out of the gate, the film opens, and you're where, you're in Venice, where they're at the auction. It's so beautiful, the scenery. So they really did take a lot of the money. I mean, they were filming all over Europe, and being that they right. filmed all over Europe, I felt like a lot of this film was like what you said in the synopsis, like it was kind of biting off of the Ocean's films, no? It definitely had an Ocean's Eleven feel to yeah. it. Yeah. Like, which was great. I think it worked for this. You know, it wasn't like they were copycatting off it, but you definitely had that feel, especially the crew, like the, yes. you know, what they had between them. 
Okay, so I did like the scene where Kevin Hart and Abby, the ex-girlfriend, are sitting outside, and that's like the first time you see them together. And they're kind of like, it's a little flirty. They're just sitting outside of his apartment, and oh my goodness, like you can see the London Eye behind the apartment. What's, that apartment was sick. Right. I'm like he had what was it wasn't there like an infinity pool or something mm -hmm. happening? Yeah. Whoa. So I mean, like one of my favorite things about this movie <laughs> was the scenery. I mean, you got to see all different parts of Europe. The house was sick. And then there was a screen. Did you guys see the screen? There was a screen with um like when they were planning out the heist itself and they're touching the screen and they're moving things to the side and I'm like, whoa, technology. My favorite scene was Magnus getting away from one of the guys with the guns who tries to stop him after they get off the runway when the plane crashes. And then he shoots his finger off. Because he's like, I don't do guns. And he disassembles <laughs> the gun and he takes the tips off and places the gun back down on the ground. And he's like, just kind of, and then the guy blows his hand off and Magnus is just like, you can go to the hospital. Yes. <laughs> Magnus, he's a star. He brought the humor to the film. Like he, he definitely made that film shine. I like Abby. I think she's yeah. great. I think maybe it's because I just love a good love story. So I like like this, the sweet back and forth that was going on for them. I love that they ended up together. Oops, spoiler. They ended up together at the end. Like it's so cute. I, lo I love, I think that that's what gave it a lot of substance and a lot of depth. I'd have to say I would stream this one only because it was good but it dragged on a little bit long. And then again, trying to like accept Kevin Hart in a serious role, it, it just wasn't clicking for me. Something was missing. So I streamed it once. Probably now I'd drown it in butter. Sorry guys. I don't know, I, I wouldn't watch it again. I really would not watch it again. There's. There were those cute moments though, right? So there's that cute, I really loved the montage of them all like getting the plane ready and everything. That was really fun. Mm -hmm. I loved, I liked the scene with Abby and um, Cyrus in the bathroom when they're working together to get the, the piece up, like she breaks. Oh my goodness, and the drama. And knocking outside the door and they yeah. attack like they're that was joining really the funny. Mile High Club. That was so, I thought it was so funny when they were pretending they were joining the Mile High Club. <laughs> Of course, like that's what I like, below the belt humor, you know, but it was really cute. But I thought that there was a lot of it that was a little silly, not plausible again. I didn't think that you were really invested in the back, the backstory about why they needed to do the heist to begin with. I thought it took, it's, I felt like it took too much from Ocean 12, a little bit too much. I know I get it. It's a heist movie, so it can be completely similar, but I felt like maybe it just took a little bit too much. Could have added to, uh, Jorgen's customer that he was selling the gold yes. ship. Mm -hmm. Where was that story? Who was she? Where did she come mm -hmm. from? Yeah, so maybe you kind of feel me a little bit, I think. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I kind of liked it. I thought maybe I was bringing him over to my side, guys, but guess not. So thank you all so much for watching and joining us. Make sure that you follow, like, and subscribe. And join us for our next you know, Dan, just because you didn't like how it felt about Lyft doesn't mean that we have to throw popcorn at each other.